It's a mad world. Here's your look at the new NECA toys, Alien vs. Predator, Mad Predator. Terror grips the city of Sandred as it's overwhelmed by a mysterious outbreak of aliens. The cybernetically enhanced Major Dutch Schaefer and Lieutenant Lynn Karasawa of the US CMC are surrounded by a swarm of xenomorph drones when a pair of unlikely allies, predators, appear to offer a temporary alliance. Now it's a battle to end them as human and predator join forces against an unending wave of deadly xenomorphs. To start off this review, we're going to go ahead and take the measurements for the Mad Predator and taking it right to the very top of his head, stopping it right there. According to the tape measure, the figure stands 8 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 20.3 centimeters tall. As we have already looked at it, I wanted to bring in the Warrior Predator from the previous review to show you how the two stack up side by side. It's very apparent that they are making use of exact same molds, but you can see, once again, talking about something I had mentioned in the review of Warrior Predator here, NECA, by swapping out and giving a different paint scheme to them, does make the figures look drastically different. Of course, it does also help, too, that the Mad Predator is unmasked, while the Warrior Predator to the left does still have its helmet on. The figure comes with three accessories, one of which being the Plasma Caster shoulder mounted cannon, that's always a mouthful, that sits atop of its shoulder. Now, I did notice though when I got it out of packaging that the neck for the, the actual cannon is really loose. It's, it's a shame. I might have to see if I can take a pair of pliers and maybe tighten up that clamp. As you can see by the very bright blue there, it's pin. It only has like really a pin that it clamps on top of. So I'm going to see if I can maybe get a pair of pliers, like I said, and just kind of tighten that up because it sits way too loose. It does have hinge, like it does have hinge posability there. And then the top of the cannon sits on a ball joint, so you can move that around. Quickly looking, uh, as well, we've certainly spent already a lot of time looking at these over the years anyways. There's not really much that's different with this plasma caster, other than the fact that it's a nice kind of coloring of a dark mocha coffee. Seems lately, when I'm combining and talking about reviews with colors, I seem to be gravitating towards using coffee as a way of describing the color. It kind of does come across like a very rich mocha coffee. <laughs> you got some nice lighter shading happening there on the outer spine of the plasma caster. And we're going to go ahead and take it and put it onto the Predator. Now, this one here... I did notice getting it onto its shoulder, it's a little trickier. I don't know why, but it's, it doesn't seem like this tab sticks far enough down. Still works the exact same way. See that little notch right there? You see it? It's right there. And there's a little notch up the top there. You're going to take that, and this fits up into it. And then you're just going to stretch this across. Stretch it across. There we go until it fits into that groove. It does also help too that once you get it lined up, take your finger and just kind of push it down so that it sits and it really isn't gonna go anywhere. This additional pushing, which I didn't actually admit, I wanna admit that I didn't do initially when we looked at these figures like years ago, I never really pushed them down so they were always prone to popping off. Since then, pushing down on it, they seem to be a little bit more permanently placed. You could also glue these, I suppose, as well, but if you're somebody that's a purist and doesn't like to mess around with the way the figures initially come out of the packaging, just pushing it down seems to fix the problem. This doesn't fix this problem, but I'll fix that maybe a little bit later after this review. So we'll put the figure down just for a quick second. We'll examine and digest all the other accessories. You can kind of already see how the neck of the caster cannon is drooping down. We'll have a look at the other accessories that come included with the figure, which are very different than what we got with the Warrior Predator. Case in point, we get ourselves a face hugger. 
the facehugger is what we've seen before. In fact, I don't think it's any bit of a new, newer mold than the stuff that we've gotten from the Alien line or the Predator line for that matter. The tail, as you probably just saw while it was yapping away, is a wire frame. There's a couple of little hole there, air holes on the interior, and you can bend the tail. Generously, also I might add, uh, it has some great detailing there on the face hugger. Let me see if I can just move the camera a little bit. There we go. Does look quite good, I have to admit. Kind of given that cell shaded color scheme, the, the way that it's applied to the figure, that I really have liked so much about these figures. There's the interior. Six legs. Well, I guess eight legs, but the front legs are always kind of more across, coming across like antenna than anything else. But an eight-legged creature, always still very terrified when I see a face hugger. I used to, I think, actually have a couple of dreams where I felt like I was being attacked by face huggers. Probably not a good idea to watch alien films when you were when you were really really young. Nonetheless, there is the face hugger. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about it because we've looked at face huggers in the past. We likely will look at them still further moving forward because NECA likes to reuse these face huggers. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm also bending the tail here of the also included chest burster. That chest burster is a rather nice looking piece. There it is right there. Very small, small. You can see its little hands there. A very small, intricate little sculpted accessory. I would want to use the term accessory and not so much figure because there's really nothing that moves on it. You can't move and open and close its mouth. It doesn't look like it's got one big smile on his face. Oh, that makes me happy. Of course, it's got the adjustable tail. Actually, from the side and its coloring, kind of reminds me of Jabba the Hutt's colors. It's not really quite the same same movie property but still nonetheless the coloring is almost kind of a greenish gray and as you can see by the air holes it does also have a wire frame so you can move the tail curled around if you want or you know you can wrap it around I guess the predator's arms I guess as well if you wanted to always in love when we get like little fun accessories like a face hugger and a chest burster that's it though that's all folks that's all we're getting for accessories for this figure but still a pretty nice release. As we had already looked at, whoop, there it is right there, the Warrior Predator. Yeah, it does look like the exact same figure. Doesn't look like there's anything really different between the two. I know what you're yelling. Someone's yelling from the back, the audience, coloring, his paint, his paint. Yes, I know. Same figure. Um, the caster also looks like it's the exact same as well. This one fared a lot better when it comes to the neck not being excessively loose. It can still move freely. It's a shame that this one does have such a limp neck. But again, I'll just probably, uh, I'll try to fix that up in some way, shape, or form. Speaking of one way, shape, one shape or form, having a look at the form of the head sculpt here. Of course, this is the unhelmeted version mask unhelmeted face sculpt that we've seen with many a renditions of Predators in previous years. Something to be said though about the color scheme. I am certainly a sucker when it comes to new color palettes when it comes to these new figures. Even though they're essentially making use of the exact same molds, there's something very colorfully splendid when it comes to the frost coloring here of the Mad Predator. Kind of looks like he's made of ice. And I like that a lot. The complementing blues here of the very light frosted blue and the slightly darker shade of blue complement this figure rather nicely. I also like the fact that the mandible teeth, being that they are not of the blue variety but instead a brown, complements again the overall color scheme. The grays, the grays in his armor also do quite w nice wonders comparing against the backdrop here of the uh, the very iced blue torso. Uh, the face sculpt, like I said, we've seen before, we'll likely see again. Some details like the interior of its mandibles get sort of lost because they're just jet black. As well, you could also say the same thing for his eyes. His eyes are really just this hauntingly piercing these white little pupils. Well, the rest of the recessed areas of the eyes just remain still jet black. I feel like I'm just kind of walking out in the woods somewhere and I'm running across this creature that's comprised of ice. 
splendid is the best word I could describe for this guy. Maybe I have to start looking up, reading through thesauruses because I seem to use material words to describe figures that normally you wouldn't really combine with a figure like a predator, for example. Refreshing and all that stuff. Anyways, anyways. He does have the exact same, which I can't quite get my finger on it right now. Can't quite place and put my finger on it, literally and figuratively. There we go. Once again, the uh, control panel console left with nothing. Left only with the colors it came in with, and unfortunately they didn't paint anything else to that. I guess in some ways NECA did give some extra painting on the side, but really all the interior of the control pad is just left to just brown, which is kind of sad. At the very least, I wish they could have carried this same color scheme, the lighter browns in there, just on the inside as well. You could argue, well, it, you really aren't going to see it anyways, but it's always nice to open up and be surprised by some extra little pops of color. Sadly, that's not the case here. The armor, like I said, is just a carryover to the one that we had gotten before, but once again, we bring the other figure in. It's a different color, and with their own corresponding colors, they have then varying shades of similar colors. I just said colors for a whole lot of times there. This one does have kind of a more of mocha coffee. This one has more like a blue-based gray. But you can see like the shades that they use are still in the same placement. If we spin the backs around there. The lighter colors seem to be in the exact same places. Interestingly enough, this one doesn't have the as you can see right here, the highlights of the lighter gray, it's sort of just kind of kept, and there's this little square of a lighter gray down below. Kind of interesting the way they did that. As great as the blue-based gray works well with the lighter cream colors, I have to say like this brownish gray that they've used here, once again, that kind of mocha coffee, works exceptionally well with the otherwise very light, cold to the touch, even though it's not, uh, the ice blue coloring of the Predator. Love the airbrushing that they've done around the leg muscles there. Dark, dark blue gets a little bit lighter blue and then even lighter still. But it doesn't seem like it gradually carries into itself. As you can see, very sharply outlined here in the airbrushing of the dark blue. But NECA makes no efforts whatsoever in a good way to transition that softly and gradually into then the lighter color. It's that pop of contrasting colors in a dark way that really makes this figure stand out quite a bit. Of course, it's got the gauntlet blades, something of which we've already looked at with the other figure. There's nothing different about this particular figure, and it slides and retracts out the exact same way. So let's have a look at its posability, and then we'll kind of wrap this up, because I know you guys have places you need to go. Its head rotates back and forth. It also hinges up and down. I don't know if I spent a whole lot of time talking about it, but there it is right there, his little necklace, which is a loose plastic piece. But the head hinges up and down, left and right angle, and in theory you could rotate the head all the way around, although you do run the risk of popping the shoulder cannon off. The arms move forward and back, out, there goes the very limp neck once again. Swivels at the bicep, has a double hinge on the elbow, also rotates where the gauntlet is attached to the arm, and the hand also rotates back and forth as well. Upper torso ball joint, lower torso ball joint. The legs split out, the legs go forward, the legs go back, they swivel at the top cut of the thigh, as you can see right there. I guess you could swivel this all the way around, but you would run the risk of breaking this. Even though it's a softer plastic, it stays out of the way, but still you don't want to be jeopardizing anything by simply doing something that isn't natural of the figure anyways. It does have a double hinge on the knee. There's one, there's two. It doesn't swivel at the, at the lower calf. However, the leg hinges up and, well, the foot hinges up and down, angles back and forth, and in theory you can rotate it all the way around. Once again, you got peg holes on the undersides of the feet. This will certainly aid if you want to have the figure in a little bit more of a dynamic pose than simply just having the feet firmly planted straight down, um, but still a great looking figure. Not really sure which one I like more. We'll just move the accessories out of the way here for a second. Putting the two side by side, once again, it's a testament that NECA can use an existing mold. 
And from a standpoint, physically, there's mold exhaustion, but I don't feel like there's mold exhaustion when it comes to collecting and looking at these figures. They are consistently brought out and released with unique colors to one another. I mean, case in point, these, these two figures are identical to one another, except for the heads. The heads are really the only thing that's different and a few swap out of accessories. Other than that, you can see how the exact same mold is interpreted in two different ways. That's three, two different ways. That's technically four, two different ways. Collectively, like looking at both of them, I kind of think I like this one a little bit more. I really like the cell shaded uh, lighting of the gray against the backdrop of that light cream color. No slouch though is the Mad Predator. I do dig the cool to the touch, not quite to the touch, but the cool colors of the blue palette that this one does have. And like I said, it's nice to collect both of them because they feel so drastically different from one another. The Mad Predator has some really cool colors to him. No pun intended. Uh, one thing I do really like about it is its icy blue contrast of colors to what we would normally expect to find with a regular Predator figure on your shelf. Those Predator figures that we've collected over the years for movie tie-ins generally have more realistic colors. But this cell shaded approach that NECA does so well when making use of these molds, there's something so unique and enjoyable about them. Looking at them, they stand out so much. It almost kind of reminds me of the walkers from uh, Game of Thrones. I, now I'm just seeing that, and now that's all I can see. It looks like a Predator Walker from Game of Thrones. It's not funny. I uh, really do like the colorings that they used for it. It's somewhat I, funny, actually, the Predator figures. We've gotten so many of them. I mean, I could lose... I wouldn't have enough hands or toes, fingers and toes, to be able to count out the number of times that we've gotten this exact mold. But once again, giving it a brand new color scheme... Boy, does this one ever stand out from the crowd. Uh, one thing that NECA is smart for doing is making the most out of their existing molds. And by dabbling into the realm of video games, do they get to be a little bit more creative? I know with normal Predator figures based on movie tie-ins, you kind of have to keep the consistent colors in place that we would normally expect to see a Predator look like. But it's when it comes to these video arcade renditions, NECA can kind of expand out, think outside the box, if you will, and give us these bright, colorful Predators that we don't normally get regularly. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the White Walker Predator, that's all I'm going to be thinking about now, uh, good news is you can pick up the Mad Predator as well as the Warrior Predator now at local comic book stores or comic book stores in your immediate area. I know some people have to drive a little bit further to get to their local comic book stores. Some retail stores are also stocking these as well. So, happy hunting! You see what I did there as well. Either way, today we were having a look and dropping a whole lot of puns, and I see what you did there. We were having a look, though, at the new NECA toys, Alien vs. Predator, and this was the Mad Mad Predator. I added an extra mad. It's technically only one mad. Don't be mad if you've missed out on previous videos. One good news is about the way that YouTube works is you can go back to my home page. Check out any videos that I've posted in the last recent memory. See if there's anything you may have missed along the way. There's a good chance with the amount of content that I'm posting, you may have missed out on something. And that's okay. You can always go back. Always like reading new comments in older videos. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And more NECA reviews as well as other things will be coming soon to this channel. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.